Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to combine and unpivot worksheets or tabs in your Excel file using the function capabilities of Power Query. You may get your Excel files from a system or from coworkers, and in the file, there's multiple worksheets. Now you gotta combine the data in those worksheets. It could be a simple combine, and if it's a copy and paste, it's not that bad with one, two, or three worksheets. If you got a lot of worksheets to deal with and it's a repetitive process, it becomes kind of a bear to do all this. But if you use Power Query and use the function capability in Power Query, you can just set it up one time and when you get additional worksheets or you have to do this again, it becomes so much more easier. So I have an Excel file here and I have these tabs, John, Jane, and Jay Shree. They all have the same format and I wanna combine all these but I also want to transform it so it looks like something like this. And this would be a proper table where we could do some further analysis. And the extra that I want in this is if I have other files to add into that worksheet, other tabs to add into that file, like someone from Sam or something from Ming, you know, any additional person in the same format, it's going to add to this table. So let's see how we can do this with Power Query, combining it and unpivoting it all at once. So here I am in a new worksheet. I need to get that file into Power Query. So I go to data, get data from file, from workbook and search for that file. Here I have the file, double click to open and it's gonna open it up in the navigator and it sees that I have these three worksheets there. I, want, I don't want the, the worksheets, I want all the file, I want the whole file. So I'll select my folder icon here and click transform data. And here it's gonna bring it up in the Power Query editor and all I need is these two columns. I don't need the rest of these metadata here. So I'll select shift key, select the first and second column, right click, remove other columns. Now you notice here, when I click on the blank space here, it gives you a preview of the worksheet in there, right? So they're all the same here. You can see that they're all the same. What I wanna do is I wanna create a duplicate of this particular query and turn it into a function. So I'll right click this, duplicate, let's call this a sample query. Control A, select that all sample, press enter, and I've got my sample. And I wanna do the transformations on one of these tables. I don't wanna, I don't need to do all of them. I just need to do it on one of them. So I'll select this first one, click table, and it's gonna pull out that particular table within uh, John's uh, data worksheet. And this is where I'm gonna do the transformations. All these steps here don't have any transformation into the table. The steps afterwards are the ones that I wanna keep for my function. And so you just gotta be aware of the where you start with the transformation of the table. And whatever name we give to that step is where we wanna keep everything else above that, we're gonna remove. So I wanna do the transformation here, make the first row as headers, use first row as headers, I got my headers there. And then click here, right click to unpivot unpivot other columns, and then I've got my table here. All I need to do is give it some names now. Th these are items, uh, these are quarters, and that's it. That's all I need to do right there for the, my transformation. It's a very simple transformation. Now I gotta turn this into a function. So what I need to do is I need to go into the advanced editor. I can go either click on home, advanced editor, or just right click my sample here, and advanced editor. And I'm gonna delete everything, all the steps that are above where I, did the transformation on the table. So I first did all the transformations after the table, the, after the data step, so prom, promote header. So we, we need to be aware of that when we go into the advanced editor. So I'll go to the advanced editor, click on that. So you can see here, promote headers, that's where I wanna keep everything else. I can remove, delete that, and I need to create my function name, right? So press enter a couple times, and the function name I'm gonna give it is all tables, because this function will do it for all the tables within the sheets. You can call it anything you want, um, but this has to be as a table. So I'm gonna pass a table into a variable called all functions, right? Equal sign, uh, the arrow key, or the, uh, I think this is the less than sign. And I need to reference this name in here. That's my gonna be my first step. So all tables, we're gonna replace data. Right? That, that was the name of that step. So we're gonna replace data with all tables, and that's the variable name that's gonna be passed into this step as the first step. So I click okay, click done, and it's gonna turn it into a function. So all I need to do is go back into my first query here and invoke that function. I'll go to add column, invoke custom function, and we have our column name. I'm just gonna leave that as custom. What's my function query? It's called that, so it's gonna be called sample. And 
what do I want to pass into this all tables name that I gave that particular function, right? I want to pass anything within this data column, which is that unpivoted column. Each of these rows have an unpivoted column. So I'm going to pass that in there, click OK, and you can see my first data column here is that unpivoted column. My second one here, the sample, is it where it does all the transformation and it's pivoted. You can see it does the same for the other uh, rows here, right? And so that's all I need. I don't need this data column anymore. Click that, press delete, and click on the double-headed arrow here to expand this. Don't need the original column name. Click OK. And now we have our unpivoted range of data from each of those worksheets. Click home, click close and load. It's going to put it into the worksheet here. And the nice thing about this is now it's future proof. You can add other worksheets in there that have the same format and refresh this and it's going to pull it in and do all the transformation. Let's see how we can do that. So here I have the two Excel files open up. This is the one I pulled in from Power Query. Here's a new file that has Sam's data. Let's just pull this over in to the other one. I'm just going to take this control C to copy, create a new one and just call this one Sam. Make it capital S Sam and control V to paste. It's there in the same format. It's right there. Click close, click close. I don't need this, so click OK. And you can see that it's not here. I can click in my table, right click, refresh, or just in the queries and connection, click refresh there. But I like to do it here in the table. Click refresh. And Sam should be right down here, right? And so now I have updated this particular query uh, invoking that function. And if we add other tabs, other worksheets into that file, it will automatically combine all those worksheets and do the unpivot transformations. So that's how you can do it with Power Query invoking a function. Using Power Query and passing the function in Power Query makes doing these repetitive tasks like combining files and unpivoting your data so much more easier. Once you initially set it up and you get new data in your files, such as new worksheets, it's almost like magic when you press that button to refresh. And that's the beauty of using Power Query to do this kind of transformations for your data. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end.